In this chapter, we're going to talk about so-called parametric 3D objects. And to follow along, I simply want you to open up Cinema 4D Lite to a blank slate like this. Since this is the beginning of a new chapter, I'll remind you how to do that. Open up After Effects, go File, New, Max on Cinema 4D File, or right-click on the Project Panel, do the same thing. When you do that, it opens up this dialog box. Give your file a name and put it someplace where you can access it later. I've put it inside the My Exercise Files folder on my desktop. When I do that, it opens it up here in the Project Panel and opens up Cinema 4D Lite. So what are parametric 3D objects? Well, they're these guys here. I'm going to click on this cube and hold down my mouse button to view them all. They're called parametric because they are mathematically defined using parameters. Parameters, parametric. Sometimes they're called primitives, sometimes they're called procedural objects, but we're going to stick with parametric 3D objects here. They are the basic building block for virtually every kind of 3D object that you can make inside Cinema 4D. There are two approaches to making 3D objects inside Cinema 4D, using parametric 3D objects or using polygons. And the thing is, the polygon tools inside Cinema 4D Lite are limited. You really are not expected to make things using polygons inside Cinema 4D Lite. It's a high-level kind of thing to do. It's the thing you use to make organic-looking 3D objects like human beings and animals and plants, stuff like that. And it's just not something that you're going to be doing inside Cinema 4D Lite. So we're going to focus on the parametric 3D objects, which are the things that are used most often by virtually everyone who uses this program. You can make plenty of cool things using these objects as building blocks. You can change the way they look to create things, or you can take them pretty much in their original state to make objects. For example, you can take a sphere and a cone and make an ice cream cone, just something as simple as that. So we're going to talk about the various kinds of parametric 3D objects in this lesson. I'll talk about how to move them around and change their shapes and sizes in upcoming lessons. So let's take a look at the organization here a little bit. You can access the parametric 3D objects by using this icon palette here, simply by clicking and holding on this guy here like that to open it up. If I just click on it once, then it adds that object. I'll do Control or Command Z to undo that. I can also access these guys by a menu command by going to Create Object. And there they are organized slightly differently here. But the engineers at Maxon created this nice little icon toolbar for you here, so you might as well use this guy. So I'm going to click and hold on this to see these various objects. So let's just take a look at the organization here. We've got some standard geometric shapes, cube, cone, cylinder, sphere, and then we've got a pyramid, then some sort of semi-standard ones like a torus and a platonic. A platonic is an object made up of a number of polygons. Then there's some things that don't quite fit into the standard approach to 3D objects like capsule, oil tank, and tube. Then a couple of the 3D objects here, the landscape and the figure, and by the way, the relief is like the landscape. And a couple more things that are not objects at all, guide and null. And then there are three things here that are 2D objects. You cannot make them 3D, they are flat. Let's start off by just adding a cube. It's very simple to do that. Just click on it, and there, lo and behold, is a cube. Let me just kind of talk a little bit about its position. When you add a 3D object like this, it is centered at the origin of the work plane. I'm going to move it around a bit by just clicking on this thing here and dragging it up a little bit like that. Clicking over here and kind of rotating it a bit. And notice the center of the object is at the center of the work plane. All right, that's just by default there. Let's add another object to it. So click on this, to open it up, and go to Sphere. And Sphere is smaller than the cube. So I'll turn off the cube by clicking the little green checkbox on the right-hand side over here. And there's our Sphere. It, too, is centered up. I'll hold down the Alt or the Option key, then the left mouse button, and then manipulate it this way as well. You can see that it's centered in the work plane there. I'm going to delete these two guys by just dragging my cursor there to highlight both of them. I'm pressing the delete key or the backspace key. Let's go back up here again. Let's click on platonic. That adds by default an icosahedron. This is a 20 sided platonic. You notice when you add something like this, the attributes manager has its own set of properties here. It's a unique set for each item. So in this particular case, it talks about the type. So I can change it, for example, to an octahedron, which is just eight sides. So we'll talk about working with these properties in an upcoming lesson. Let's talk about some things that are very similar. I'll delete this, make it active, delete it. If I want to add multiple objects, rather than going back and forth to the icon palette, I can just click on hold on this thing and then click on this guy here once. That makes a floating panel, so I can drag that out of the way there. Let's say I want to add a few things. I go click on cylinder, capsule, oil tank, tube. Four related things, by the way, and now I've added those four guys. I can close this thing down. 
And I can still access this over here if I want to. So we'll close that back. Even though these things are very similar, they do have different properties. So for example, here's tube. You see it has these various things, inner radius, outer radius, things like that. Oil tank, different. Down here, you see they're different from one thing to the next. Each one has a different set of properties, despite the fact that they're very similar. And you can change these things to make them look even more similar if you care to, but they do have different properties, such as you can make them look the way you want them to look, like so. Let me delete all four of them by just highlighting them like that, pressing the delete key. Go back up here again. The figure is a unique parametric 3D object. I'll click on that. It looks for all the world like you can work with these things as segments. Let me pull out a bit by clicking on this little arrow and dragging it like that. Pulling back here. I'm not zooming. Physically moving my camera back is what it amounts to here. If I click on this guy, you'll notice I really can't select, let's say, his hand or his head or something like that. This is where working with polygons comes into play in kind of a practical approach. We can click on this little guy over here, which makes it editable. Shortcut is C. And now it's editable. And so what's different? I'll do Control or Command Z to undo that. Look over here. You see figure. Now I'll do this. And now notice we have a plus sign in front of there. And the figure, now you see there are parts to it. Thigh, thigh, upper body. Open these guys up. It looks for all the world like you're working with null object layers inside After Effects, where the null object layer might control a group of things. So for example, left thigh here. Click on that to make it active. I can rotate that by pressing the rotate key here and move that around. I move the whole left thigh. If I click left shin, that will be rotated independently. So when you make this figure editable, you can work with these segments, which is a little different than you'd expect when you work with polygons. There are, in fact, polygons here that you can work with independently, but in this case, you also get this kind of advantage here of working with these various body parts. To see the polygons, by the way, there are a couple of ways, but one way is to go to display here inside the viewer and click on anything that has lines after it, constant shading, quick shading, grow shading like that. Now you can see the polygons. And you can work with the polygons individually, and I'll talk about that in upcoming lessons. But now you can at least see that when you go to make this editable, you can work with the various segments of this figure, which only applies to this figure. Let me delete the figure here by clicking on that and pressing delete. Okay, we'll look at a couple more things here. There's landscape and relief, and they are virtually the same. I'll click on landscape, and you get this default landscape there. Click on the scale tool here, and you kind of look at that more dramatically there. And it has all kinds of properties down here that allow you to change the way it looks. Or you can use the relief object. I'll get rid of this guy. Go here and click on relief. And relief looks like nothing happened. But relief is asking you to use an image or a graphic to create the texture, to create the shape. And the shape is created based on the luminance of the object, the dark areas and the bright areas. So for example, I go down here and click on this little dot, dot, dot thing here to bring in a texture. I'm going to go to my Working Files Assets folder and bring in the Abstract Waves JPEG. Let's just take a look at it. It looks like this. So you see there are bright areas and dark areas. When we bring it in, the bright area will be the peak and the dark area will be the valley. So let's just take a look at that. I'll select you, click Open. It says, do you want to copy and paste this someplace else? No, I don't want it. Now you can see where the dark and bright areas are. The bright areas of the peaks and the dark areas of the valleys. You can expand the view a little bit so you get a better view of that. And you can manipulate its view here as well. Let me turn off the little polygons here. We'll go back to standard grow shading like that. Let's delete that and move on to just a couple more things here. There's guide and null, two completely different things. We'll go to guide. With the guide, you can set up things and then attach them to the guide. So I'll manipulate the guide by moving it a bit here off to one side and I'll rotate it a bit so you can just kind of see that it's no longer lined up with the original floor. Then I'll add an object like a cube. I want to have the cube attached to the guide. So if I click on the Move tool here and move it around, it doesn't attach. I have to turn on Snapping for it to attach. Over here, click on Snapping, and let's see what happens now. It still doesn't work, because you have to take it one step beyond. So I open up the Snapping tool here by holding it down. Down here at the bottom is Guide Snap. So that's how Snapping works here with a guide. Drag it, now it'll snap. It gives it perspective as well. It also scales it off in the distance there. It gives it the appearance of scaling in the distance as we go back here. So that's what you would use a guide for. I'll delete these two guys here. And finally, the last 3D parametric object is null, which works very much like a null object layer inside After Effects. Click on that. Nothing happens. It just puts this thing here, this little coordinate system here, to which you can add things. So I'm going to add a couple of cubes. One, two. They're not added to the null just yet. They're both independent. I'll take one of them and move it off to the side so you can see there are two of them there. 
I'll take both of these guys by clicking on the first one, control clicking on the next one, and dragging it into the null. So now the null controls these two guys, just as it would inside After Effects. If I click on Null and move it around, they both move together. Click on Null and rotate it, then they're going to rotate together as well. But they can still work independently. I can click on one of the cubes and rotate it independently of the Null. I can move them independently as well. So that's what Null does. And we're going to talk about using the Null 3D parametric object many times in upcoming lessons. It really is an important part of working with 3D objects because you want to, let's say, control something that has multiple 3D objects within it. So you put them all inside a null like this. I want to call it a null object layer, but in fact, it's just called a null here. So there you go. We have this little null 3D object here, and we can put things inside that null 3D object. So that is a rundown on the parametric 3D objects. We'll talk about moving them around, scaling them, and changing their properties in upcoming lessons.